All right, we're gonna keep going with some digital painting stuff. I just wanted to give another example, maybe throw out like slightly different methods. I wanted to paint this um, super creepy house that I saw on corner in Austin. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I think what makes it creepy is the fact that the second story kind of like rests on the windows of the first story. Um, and I, I might wanna just kind of like mix some methods and um, sort of change up the color palette a little bit, push shapes, of course, and uh, and see what we can do to make this really, um, really creepy. I think um, a lot of painting begins with an underdrawing, so I want to begin there, I think. And I want to start with a different background color because this sort of gray is kind of boring. Um, in fact, we could try this middle sickly green. That could give us a good base layer. Um, there's green in the grass. There's an overcast sky. Maybe we should use the overcast sky as a background color. But we don't have to. Let's just stick with it and run with it. Um, use a dark version of that and I'll create a new layer. And then um, I'm just going to use a sketching brush to kind of do this. Um, so what I like to do is zoom out of the image, make it small, and then take my main canvas and zoom out a couple of stages. So this is for sort of a setup thing because your first kind of concept is that you want to, um, you want to begin with the like big shapes and begin by pushing things around in interesting ways. So we can do a quick like test of the brush size that'll work for now. And what we want to do is draw out like the composition. So interesting, I'm going to pick up on interesting angles. I think the roof line is kind of the first interesting thing. Um, it kind of goes up, kind of goes down, and kind of bends here. And then it has a compound roof line and does this. Um, that is probably too big of a shape, so we can transform it and resize it really quickly. And then this is an awkwardly big triangle here. And then if we get the first story laid out, I think that'll be good. I wanna be sure that there's overlap there. going to get a certain amount of overlap, more overlap than's in the photo here. So what we want to do is just seek these shapes first. And we don't want them to be like I want this to be a little wonky because I want it to kind of go into a um, more of a concept design realm than a perfect like representation of the building. And all I think about at this stage is like, is this creepy? Does it have the shapes that I want? Um, the shape language is really important for something like this because I'm also painting it basically flat. You know, I'm not, it's in perspective, but it's not like, I'm, it's not like I'm looking at the side of the building, um, looking at the corner. Um, and since I'm painting on the sketch layer, I can keep moving it around and I can transform it again if I need to. So this chimney covers up a corner here. You can see a second side of it. And 
there's like this little triangle peak thing over here then there's a second chimney I want to move it away from that peak though that I had Now I need a short, like, first story, probably. I think I want to shorten it. Make it like that. Remember, the end goal of this is to be a painting and not a drawing. So I can't get too far into the drawing. Otherwise, I'm just going to draw. So I use this drawing just to kind of reevaluate the shapes of everything and kind of get a layout. I have no idea what this building was. It just creeps me out. It looks like... Um, some place that's pretending not to be a prison but is a prison you know either like a creepy boarding school where bad things happened or like you know convalescent hospital or like an old mental institution or something with unhealthy practices and then we want to complete out the composition so we can lay out some um, trees and things and some bushes kind of in the foreground and if we make them based on triangles it'll seem creepier a little path some plants and stuff lining in the front we got plants in the back it's like another outbuilding back here, which can probably leave as mostly just a shape. And there's plants that kind of just run along the front there. And I like the idea of like a creepy foreground tree. It even overlaps this. Okay, so now what you do is you take this and you put this into multiply blend mode so it gets darker and then you're going to draw under it or paint under it um, as long as you like those shapes. You can always change and pull shapes around from here. So I'm going to make this a little bigger and I'm going to turn down the opacity to like 50% so I can see it but it's not but when I paint under it, it's going to um, be more clear what's going on. Um, so I kind of like, I like the original color schemes of this, but I want to um, just play around with it and see if I can get things to happen. It's going to stay probably pretty low saturation. So maybe I just want to do like, you know. know about that color so make it brighter don't have a layer selected what I want to focus on in this sort of first layer is just well I mean the main thing is covering covering the canvas or the artboard once I cover the canvas then I can begin making judgments and judging relationships of various objects. Now I could, when I get an area filled, I could just like bucket fill it and then just fill in any gaps. I 
bucket filling is always an adventure because inevitably there's some area that you didn't like quite quite fill and then it just fills the whole canvas so what I do here is I look for places where the same color occurs and I go fill those in So this is looking more red than it probably is um, just because of this blend mode. And then what we can do is keep doing this and turning off our, um, our sketch layer periodically so that we can judge what's happening. And then here, I'm going to cover up even the windows probably. I'm going to go ahead and fill in everywhere that's um, got stucco. I'm getting what I can see here is I've got little gaps and I can fill those gaps here because in the end I want it to be a painting and I don't want it to be a drawing so I have to I have to fill these little gaps better oh this is stucco too so I need to get this paint that out And then I need to start from here and then develop a probably pretty orangey, fairly saturated middle value. I'll try this for the brick. I'm going to go down to the bottom and then um, I'll wind up painting over it. door doesn't have any bricks but that's okay because I'm gonna paint the door on top so there's like really methodical ways to do this where each each color could be its own layer or each area that overlaps the next could be its own layer but I wanted to teach you kind of more of a non methodical or teach I say um, just demonstrate a non methodical way that's like very intuitive that no matter what software you pick you can just like kind of work with it like this. Um, the other thing that we can do from here now um, that this that this uh, house is covered is the house isn't the whole painting, right? And so what I like to think of it as is um, going for cheap real estate. So the cheapest, easiest way to like cover a bunch of stuff here is going to be to get the sky in because it takes up so much of the canvas. So I just go over and I want to decide on like a desaturated but pretty light sky color because it is a fairly gray sky and a f maybe a greenish tinge to it would be creepy. I don't know. But what I can do since I'm working on the same layer is I can go from here the house is already covered up and I can go from about here. And what I should be able to do is just bucket fill the sky area. Um, and I went below the horizon there kind of on purpose. Okay, so if I turn the sketch layer off, it's kind of developing things, right? And then I need to actually get a little bit of these, um, these colors back in the background here. Um, 
of saturated. Check on the relationship. I think it's like lighter and less saturated as well. So we don't want it to be like too bright because it still needs to stick in the background. Horizon's pretty low, somewhere around the door. Um, so we're gonna paint the uh, the bushes to kind of hide some of the horizon. And these are gonna be fairly dark green, so I'll pick a green, but kind of kind of maybe like a yellow green around here, and I'll do that for the uh, for these shrubs. Um, there's lots of cool brushes out there now where you can just um, like get an immediate foliage texture. And that's fantastic if you have to work fast. Um, but the thing is, it, it won't be quite as nuanced or interesting as if you kind of hand draw stuff. So I like to just kind of focus on the edge first and create interesting edges that imply that foliage, at least on layer one, right? I'm still working on layer one. And I do want to preserve kind of the triangularity that I was thinking would be interesting at the beginning. And then what I can do is where I see through these areas, I can keep building up these small textury marks. Until I get to places where I can't see through this. Now, if I had this on another layer, that would be more convenient, probably. The origins of Photoshop were interesting because, um, you know, there wasn't the ability to layer. And one of the things that is kind of a fad now is um, people are working without layers. Um, to do their paintings. So this has kind of a rough edge and we've gone with like a graphic painting style which is um, which is pretty pretty nice in a lot of ways. Gives it some character. Um, that's a good way to begin. So what we can do for like architectural details is if we zoom in here on this thing like there's these neat architectural details like up here that give this a lot of character. So back on our original image, we can keep that off to the side. Go back to our original image, add a layer. Okay. And um, maybe that's a bad example. Let's do just one of the windows. Let's take this window. So what we need to do is just paint this window, but I want to paint it on a new layer and I'm going to ignore sort of the, um, the scale of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it really big on his own thing. and just kind of work on the proportions really big. Bucket fill it. And then I can take this stucco color and begin to subdivide this thing. There's no way if I actually like painted this scale that I could get all the detail that I would want. Probably need to like reduce brush size some, especially for down here. I'm going to modify that color, make it less saturated. I can get some darks in here too. There's like sections of window that are broken here, which I think is interesting. So I want to have that. 
probably go darker and less saturated. I don't want to, remember, I don't want to use full black. Full black kills color. Okay. There's sections in here that are dark though. Around the rim, there's some dark areas. There's um, a relatively deep shadow up here in this curve that I want to be sure to get. Then I want to get like this stucco color again, but like a slightly darker version to go here. Use this for kind of this area around. can actually paint the bottom of this window here. And then I can use some different colors to kind of get these like streakies in here. A little orange in there too, I think. Then I can get some like shadows under it too. I can potentially use similar shadows in other places. If I squint, I think these windows are overall a lot darker. They're not very um, shiny windows. You know what I mean? Like they're not. They're not very reflective. I need this to go up here too. Um, teeny transitional elements going out to the actual stucco here. I could probably introduce a little bit of the sky reflection, just a little darker. Um, and some of these window panels. Doesn't have to be like a perfect reflection though. It'll read that way because it has a, a color relationship to the sky. Oh, this is broken here too, so we can run that all the way out there. Some deep shadows under here too, which we can use. Okay, cool. Anyway, that's enough. That's like super, that's super detailed. So what I do is I hit transform, or control T, edit transform, and then I can pick the transformation style that I want. And then I can, um, you know, zoom back out of my image so I can see like, reference wise like what I like about this and I can scale it down to the scale that I want here um, which is relatively small it goes under that lines up roughly around here cool so that's like my first architectural detail. And if I want to, I could create a very detailed um, uh, sort of painting this way by painting like the, the lar these things really big and then scaling them down. Um, because you'll notice that when I, when I zoom in, right, it kind of just, everything kind of just blends in nicely. Um, because I've used a similar color range as my layout, okay? 
So then I can I can do this for anything. I can do it for every single window. I can do it for brick textures. Um, you know, if I get a shingle texture that I'm happy with, like I could take this, add a layer. I could um, take this color. I could start drawing out some shingle textures, right? Um, I could kind of break them up a little bit. And I can make them go kind of in perspective the way they're going in here. I could draw this, draw out a big grid of these things, whatever. Then I can hit transform and scale them down to where it's a reasonable size on the texture. And I can move it into place. Then I can copy and paste it and start moving them around. Oops. If I make sure I have the correct layer selected, which is this one, I can um, I can hold down by using arrow keys, and if I use shift, it moves faster. And then I can go up, move it into place, right? Then I can take, I can merge these layers together, copy again, paste them again. If I grab the right one, which I didn't again. Um, I can again move it into place, bring them over. Merge it down again, right? And keep copying and pasting. And eventually I'd get this huge texture, right? And then, you know, I don't necessarily like the scale of that. I could make it bigger so you could see it. Okay, now it's obvious that I'm repeating the same thing. So what I would want to do is come in here to this layer, right? And then begin, um, get a very small brush out and then begin like making some changes where things, um, so things don't line up as uh, in such a systematic and boring way. So I can create some nuance in there. And then I can also take my eraser out where I don't need the texture and I can erase some of the texture. Because I don't need to like overdo it with the texture on, and I don't have to draw every single shingle, right? Um, you know, where there's a lighter stain there, I can concentrate on texture there. But you see how doing that, it begins to build a texture. And if I do that really, um, you know, over and over and kind of repeat elements, but then go back in and put changes in, it's going to work really nicely, you know? Um, other things that I can do are um, when you're working with architecture. So let's look at a close-up of this siding, okay? So if we look at the structure of the siding, there's a dark line, a light line, wood, like three layers of wood, and then another dark shadow, and then the stucco. So what I want to do is go to the area that I want to fill, right? Say I want to fill like this segment right here. Zoom in so it takes up this whole area, right? Then I can scale my brush. Okay, so I've got a pretty good scale on the brush. So what I can do is click where I want it to begin, hold the shift key, click where I want it to end. It's a straight line, right? So I'm working on a wonky object. So instead what I have to do is have um, average straight lines, lift up the shift, boom, click, boom, click, boom, click. And this creates some straight lines that I can then work off of, and I can build them up to be the correct thickness. I'm using pressure opacity, so that's why the thickness kind of got a little bit different. Then I can clean up the edge. I'm still working on a different layer. This was a mistake. Um, I can also just start merging layers down into that first layer too, if I'm happy with what I've done. And I can, you know, keep painting on it. Um, I find merging layers helps me move along. Anyway, the next thing is to take this light color. 
So this is, I'll take this color, I'll make a desaturated and lighter version of it. I need a slightly bigger brush. So I dot there, whoops, hold shift, paint, shift, boom. Um, it barely showed up. Oh, that's because I had hit the wrong key. So I'll do this on another layer. So I can dot it, hold shift, and then I can go back and forth on that line if I need to bump up the thickness. Boom, shift, boom. I can go back and forth to bump up line weight. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so now I have that there. Then I need, um, this is pretty closely related to this back one, but it's orangier and lighter. So then I do it again. Boom, boom, boom. Too heavy. So then I can kind of paint it manually. The other thing I could use is the line tool, but that's going to give me a really strict line. So I click back and forth a few times and it builds this out. And then there's a thin shadow strip. Um, so I get like a teeny line, about like that. Maybe a little lighter, it doesn't have to be that dark. But it does kind of have to adhere. Maybe I need to draw this one manually. If I hold shift down and keep dotting, I can just do a whole set of straight lines down. Okay. See how that's kind of setting it up? It's coming along. Um, so this is how you would progress to sort of finishing something. Um, and if you're confident in your colors, you know, you can begin to finish stuff directly if you if you like these shapes. I would probably want to want to just like fiddle around with with um, some of this base layer, you know, some more, and just like really get happy with these shapes without the sketch um, layer on it. Just clean it up some and work on things like this. Just say, do I really like these lines? You know, maybe I don't like that heavy texture of the brush, so I use a smaller version of the brush to kind of help me along. push these shapes all the way out. Fill these areas, you know. Then I can always come back and check things, right? You know, and I can do the same process for this window, you know. because it's a really distinctive and interesting and characteristic window. So I can just add another layer on this thing and then paint it in the same way, right? Um, or what I can do is I can sort of like dab a color off of this, you know, get a big brush here and then like give myself an approximation because part of it is like I still need to judge 
these shapes in some ways. And then I can paint over them again, you know. If I have a base color, you know, like this, then I could go in and paint the grid in only large. Like I could add a layer. I could take this. I could then just say, well, all right. Window is going to be like this. Roughly proportioned like that. And then I have a grid in here. Heavy, heavy, light, 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 light. Um, then just light, 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 light. Transform, scale it down, put it over this window till it scales correctly. Then I can zoom in while I'm while I have the transform going. zoom out, it kind of works, right? Then I can come back in and I can add like add nuances if I want to with a small brush. So another different way to work, right? There's a hole in this window up here. I could put this hole in. I could get middle values of these things and start to work in here. go in and clean up this edge here. Grab this middle value again. There. Could add different planes into this area. Begin to add like textures and stuff onto here. This is like rust red here dark down here at the bottom of this and I could use that rust red in here too as part of this lighting scheme um, then here I could take this I could use dark versions of this especially up here I think the thing about digital painting is what you're trying to do is um, in many ways like take something that is not very nuanced you know which is like a computer because it operates in ones and zeros with rules and then what you're trying to do is manually take that idea and put nuance into it artificially right in the end, this should look like you painted it, you know? It shouldn't look like generated or like the computer did, did all the work, right? And so these are kind of things that if you mix automated and hand done methods, you're going to get a more interesting nuance. Okay. So what I could do with the mouse, let's say I want to do this grid over here differently. I could take my mouse, I could um, dab my paint, and I could say, well, bigger brush for these grids. So I imagine this is going to be the same style of window if I go over here. I want to subdivide in the middle, just boom, hold shift, boom. Then I get a smaller brush, click, hold shift, go over. Then I can clean up this edge by going click, shift, down. Click shift down. And then I want to clean up this in a minute. 
Um, I could get a super wide brush like that for this top bit. Click shift down over. And then I could get a little mini brush for these subdivisions. Click down, click, hold shift, click down. Um, this is a little thicker, so I could just double up the line by clicking, holding shift, clicking. And then I want a small brush, really small brush for these subdivisions. Now notice how there's perfectly straight lines, but they're a little wonky, you know. I think that's cool because that's part of the style that I'm going for for this painting. You might not like that style, and so you could, you could actually, you know, use a more, um, like snap to grid sort of approach, which is also fine. I could take this color, and then say click shift click. I could do things like click shift click, and then begin to paint with the mouse this way. And that way everything's like very precise and the line thickness is very controlled. And so you can see that the, you know, the end result is still interesting. Either way that you do it, it's just, which one do you want to go for? Which one like is the, it, which one gets the intention, you know? Um, so what I could also do is take on a layer, I could lasso this section. I could transform just that section. So like, cause it's a little rotated weird. Um, I could also right click and do the distortion thing. So I could uh, distort in a different way. So I could make it kind of sink down. That could be interesting. So I could do a window kind of like that, that's both mechanical and distorted, which is fun to me. And then I can just go in and clean up the edge. Now that I have an option under here, I can go under the layer with the brush. And I can paint under it to clean it up, which is potentially interesting too. That way I don't change the top layer, right? Okay, I think you have enough like technical information about how to do this sort of stuff. I just want to hit you with a couple more tricks um, to begin to put details into a painting.